All right, they're saying we're on. It's about that time. Morning, everybody. Morning. God morning. bless you. Good to see you this morning. Good crowd today. Boy, it's a sunshine, sunshiny day. Beautiful day, beautiful day. How about in here? How it yeah. looks. This well, is beautiful. What, doesn't it look nice? Talk yeah. about beautiful. Yeah, get ready yeah. for the Christmas holidays. Yeah, it's nice. A lot of hard work went on here over the weekend, I'm sure. Special thanks to, um, there were eight people who spent most of yesterday, even this morning, fixing this up, and it is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, let's give them a yeah. Well, I guess you had a big uh, last week, celebrated Thanksgiving, big I did. turkey day. And it was wonderful, yeah. Yeah. I oh, deep fried yeah. some. You smoked one, and yeah. and then uh, Allison, I guess, just baked one. Yeah, we, boy, I tell you, almost. We, we ate them all, too. Almost hit one coming up uh, Rothwell Hill. There's a turkey out there, man, just causing all kinds of problems. Yeah, what? Cars uh, going in and out. Yeah, and what was he doing? Cause accident. Well, figured I'd better call the law. Yeah. Take care of this turkey. And so, anyway. I just called that 911, so I went on, had her Thanksgiving deal and all that. Coming back, the blue lights were on. And I said, well, wonder what happened. Maybe it did have an accident. Well, the old uh, officer looks like he was cleaning up, and I asked him, said, what, what happened? He said, you know, somebody called about this turkey, caused some, some problems. I, you know, I didn't say anything. <laughs> anyway, he said, uh, yeah, we had to arrest that bird. Yeah, yeah. suspicion of foul play. <laughs> oh, boy, yeah. Oh, that goodness. Boy. Well, one thing you always count on yeah, is, well, you never know. is those yeah. bad jokes. Anyway, it was that's a good Thanksgiving. one, though. That's yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah. But we're, we're thankful for everything, even that's those right. uh, with foul play. Yeah. yeah. Now we're ready for Christmas and. Boy, what a great time for the next It is. It's absolutely uh, the best time of the year. So yeah. it's beautiful, and uh, there's a special spirit in the air, and it's incredible. Yeah. Talk about the baby. Baby Jesus. You know, every time I was thinking about, you know, think about this. Every time a baby is born, well, watch it weigh. Watch it weigh. That's what they Have you ever thought about how they determine the weight of the baby Jesus, Mary and Joseph, how they determine it? Yeah. How did they? Well, I studied again. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you read your commentaries, I'm yeah. sure. Anyway, no, they, they, they did a weigh-in. Yeah. In a manger. A weigh-in in a manger, yeah. 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 Uh, they did a weigh-in in a manger. That's how they determined it. I should have seen that one coming. No, All that's, right. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Well, let me, uh, What's our service today? while you're talking about uh, funny things, uh, you know that it's funny. Jim and Sheila have been married 34 years, and it's funny wow. that Sheila has hung in there yeah. with Jim for 34 years. Yeah, yeah. Jim's a blessed man. He, he sure is. Yeah. yeah. That's a big that's deal a right size. there. That's, that's great. 34 years. 34. All right. Well... <laughs> Well, go ahead. Why no, do you have no, on no, that? No, 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 that's it. No, really, that's it. you no, have last something week, else. Man, Thanksgiving, you took a pause on the, the sermon yeah. on the mount. So are Today's we... the last one of the sermon. Oh, all right. Part 18, Sermon 18 from his Sermon on the Mount. All yeah. right. Yeah. So, well, Two foundations. All right. Two foundations. Yeah. One good, one bad, I'm sure. Absolutely. Right. One right, one wrong. All right. Carol, you ready to have church? All right. All right. Let's go. Let's have church. I bless right. everybody. Yeah. Let's do that like we did last. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our voice toward heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just praise.
And that's a wonder that we can't even grasp that God would love us so much that he would give his own son to be our savior Amen. to die in our place for our sins never ever get over the wonder of Christmas don't take this for granted don't get frustrated by it but just stand in awe of wonder that God loves us like he does and gave Jesus to be our Savior. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today and to worship you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. And I pray we'd never take those things for granted, that we'd truly stand in awe and worship you for who you are and for what you've done and what you do every day. We thank you for the Lord Jesus you gave to be our Savior. We thank you, Father, for all he's done for us. And I pray that as we worship together, he is lifted up, that he is our message, he is our focus, he is our hope. And I pray that it would please you how we worship him. Lord, I ask you to bless every person here today and all those who are watching and listening that if they don't know Christ as Savior, that today they would then give their lives to him. And Lord, I pray you'd meet our needs too. Whatever those needs are, and we have so many in our prayer list and those in our hearts and minds. And, and Lord, we're just praying for all of them that you'd give them healing and help and hope and encouragement. Whatever they need, we pray that you would answer it in a way to bring you glory and to strengthen our faith. And Father, I just ask you to anoint every phase of this service and that you would disciple us, that we'd grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus, and that we, especially during this season, would go and tell the good news of great joy that a Savior is born. And we pray in his name. The mighty name of Jesus, amen. All right, boys, well, good to see everybody. Yeah, the song we typically do is the choir. We already start out with this after Thanksgiving. I hope Brother Cletus is watching, but this is his song. And John, won't you lead it? Huh? We didn't discuss that. All right. Place where Jesus lay. 
you faithful, let's all join in singing. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come, let us Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, that fella last week asked me to sing a song, and I said, well, we already got the program. We already got it said. This morning, he didn't ask me. He said, you're going to sing that song. So, so all right. Jim Brown, we're going to sing this for you. All right, brother? Oh, 
Amen. Whatever the circumstances, whatever the times we're going through, the uncertain days, we can look toward heaven knowing that one day we don't have any concerns about any of these things anymore. We'll be with Him forever. Amen. Let me just mention quickly tonight at 6 o'clock our evening worship service is the hanging of the green. Now we've done hung the green and we've done set up all the things. Uh, We're just trying to be cautious and reduce the risks and all of that. But we will be singing the songs and reading the, the sayings and the things about the Christmas decorations and what they mean and and the place they have, not only in our traditions, but in the scripture account of the Lord Jesus and his birth. And so tonight it'll be a beautiful service. That's at six o'clock. And then our, uh, uh, today our teachers uh, meeting, uh, we're going to postpone that with all the circumstances going on right now. Uh, we're just going to postpone that for a little bit and then get together and see what we're uh, what we're going to do, what our next steps are. We, we just appreciate so much our leaders, youth leaders, and how they're ministering to our kids, even though they're not here. But all of us, all of us want to get them back in here, and all of them want to be back in here. And so just keep praying, and we, we, we just want to keep doing the right thing. Uh, continue to help us with the food baskets. I think there's just a few things that's left uh, that that no one has signed up for all the angel tree all the angel gifts are gone and so forth so thank you for all of that and uh, help us with the little bit that's left and then the blood drive is here Friday now that's a very important thing uh, the blood drive 12:30 to 5:30 here in the gym all right that's on Friday if you can help us with that all right I don't think there's anything else is there. All right, God bless you all. Yeah.
What a great, great time of the year when we get to sing those songs and celebrate and, and we have such a beautiful environment to do it in and it's, it's a blessed time and I pray we will soak it in and that we will worship Him during this. Please turn with me to Matthew 7, Sermon number 18 and the last one from this great sermon that Jesus preached, that he taught uh, in chapters 5, 6, and 7. In verse 24 of chapter 7, Jesus said, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the, the people were astonished at his doctrine, at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. And Father, we thank you for your word and its power and its truth. And Father, we thank you that we have your word and that we know your word, the Lord Jesus. And Father, I pray that as we study together, that every word spoken is yours and not mine, and that your will is done. And that we listen to the words of Jesus and heed them this morning. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. When Jesus finishes, this is the end of his sermon as he's nearing the end of what he has to say. He says, therefore... Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings. What he's saying is, as he's wrapping this up, he says, You have heard my words. I've given you these things. Now, what will you do with them? What will you do with them? It's one thing to hear them. Another thing to truly listen to them. And then even another thing to obey them. And so Jesus then, he puts the choice out there before us. He is giving us the words. He's given, given us the teaching. Now he says, what are you going to do about this? And so this is about choosing a foundation for our lives. Choosing a foundation for our lives. And keep in mind now that this sermon he was preaching to his disciples or to those followers those who said they wanted to follow Jesus and so you would think at least that these are two believers who want to hear from him and want to follow him but he has just said there are some of you who in that day will say Lord Lord, and he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. But they'll say, but Lord, we did this and this and this and this in your name. He'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. Jesus said during his ministry, if you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so it's only those who are genuinely 
who hear His words and obey His words who are His true disciples. And so He confronts us then with the choices. And He gives us the example of these two foundations. In this passage, as He gives, and, and the people marvel as he, as he finished His sermon, they marveled at His teaching. They never heard teaching like this before. It was not like the scribes. It wasn't like the Pharisees. It wasn't like their religious leaders. But this was teaching they had never heard before. And he taught as one having authority in what he said. And they were his words. He has authority. And so he confronts us then with this example. He says there are two foundations. Two foundations, one rock and one sand. And there are two kinds of people, wise and foolish. The wise people will choose the right foundation and the foolish people which is the wrong foundation. It's pretty simple. As Jesus, he teaches us things, and then it comes down to a pretty simple thing. You need to make a choice. You need to make a choice. And so let's look at these foundations and these people, and keep in mind, as you consider these foundations, uh, you're also, in some cases, you're choosing them for others. For instance, parents, you're choosing a foundation for your children. Now, I know the day will come when they will make their own choice, but while they're with you, you choose the foundation that you're going to build your, your home upon. It's incredible how we force kids children to do things they don't want to do because we we love them and we want what's best for them I mean we force them to go to school when they don't want to because it's good for them they need to learn we make them go to the doctor when there's something wrong they don't want to who wants a shot but we make them because we love them and we want what's best for them we take them to the dentist, for goodness sakes. And it's like they don't want to go because of what may happen. But we take them because we love them and we want what's best for them. But then so many times we say things like, well, I'm not going to force them to go to church. I'm not going to force them to do this and that. Why? With hell on the line, why would you not force them to go to church why would you not bring them drag them in here and make them listen why would you let them make such a decision on their own as long as you have the control why would you want them here to hear the word of God and to have a strong foundation when you force them to do all these temporary things Right? As long as you have control, when you choose a foundation, you're choosing one for them also. So let's look at these. First of all, let's look at the kinds of people. One, the wise. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. He says, the wise are those, it says, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine. Jesus says, whosoever hears what I say, and now what he's talking about here is listen. He's not just saying you're, you're sitting here and you're hearing things, but you're truly listening. He says, those who listen to what I'm saying and doeth them or obeys is wise. Those are the wise ones. They hear what I'm saying. They listen to what I'm saying. And they obey what I'm saying. Those are the wise ones. 
He said, they're the one who builds their house upon a rock. Now, we, we have to assume, and I think that the text of Scripture implies this, is that these two houses were built by the same builder, the same way, same material. It wasn't that one house was built poorly and one house was built well. We're assuming the same builders, the same materials, built the same way, and they were both well built. The only difference was the foundation that they were built upon. And so this, the wise build their house, he says, upon a rock. Their foundation is a rock. And when the storms came and beat against this house, it said the rain descended, the floods came, the wind blew. But the house stood. It stood strong because of the foundation. Now this rock is, he intends this rock. This is not just about a, a house. This was a story. The, 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 the meaning is our lives. What is the foundation of our lives? In our lives, we're going to have circumstances. We're going to have trouble. We're going to have all kinds of storms coming into our lives. Circumstances and consequences we sometimes can't control. So what is the foundation of your life? And what is the foundation you want your kids to build their lives upon? This rock, this rock is the Lord Jesus. The word for foundation here, or the word for rock, uh, as it says in verse 24 and 25, is the word Petra. P-E-T-R-A, it's the word Petra, and it means rock. It, it, it's really not just a rock, but it, it, it's actually a, um, e- even a, a ledge or a, 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 a long portion of a solid rock that will not waver, will not give in. But he says their foundation, the wise foundation is Petra, a rock that will not move, will not waver when the storms come. And then I want you to look at this in Matthew 16. In, so, so that you understand In Matthew 16, when Jesus is talking to his disciples in verse 18, he says, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Now, what was he saying to Peter? Well, he had asked the question, Who do people say that I am? Jesus said, Who do people out there say that I am? And some said, you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah. And Peter said, you're the Christ. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's when Jesus then said, upon this rock, not that Peter is the rock. He said, upon this statement of thou art the Christ, you are the Christ. You're the Son of the living God upon this rock. I'll build my church. The same word there that Jesus is using upon this rock is the word Petra. It's the same word that Jesus is using in his sermon in Matthew 7. Therefore, Jesus is saying this. Upon this rock, me and my words... Uh, that's what to build your, that's the foundation for your lives. For it, it, it is to be me, Petra, the rock, the confession of faith that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God, and the words that I say, doing the words that I say, obeying those words, knowing me as Savior, obeying my words is the rock, is the foundation for our lives. That's what he's saying. The rock is Christ. 1 Corinthians 10, 4, it says this rock is Christ. 
the rock, the foundation for the life of the wise is Christ and His Word. Now, you want a beautiful picture of what this means. It's in Psalm 40. You're very familiar with this. Psalm 40, verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me. He listened to me, and He heard my cry. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings and he hath put a new song in my mouth even praise unto our God many shall see it in fear and shall trust the Lord this is the picture of salvation this is the picture of the foundation this is someone who who was in the horrible pit he couldn't climb out the pit is deep and and his own efforts his own works he could not get out. In addition to that, his feet are in the miry clay. And so he could not, he could not lift his feet. He couldn't do anything. He was helpless, hopeless. There was no way he could escape. And so he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord brought him out. He delivered him from the pit. He delivered him from the miry clay. He delivered him from his sins. He delivered him and put him upon a rock. On the foundation of himself. The foundation of God's word. That's what happens when we get saved. That the Lord Jesus delivers us. He rescues us and puts our feet upon a rock himself. Now listen, whatever's going on in your lives, He's the answer. He will, not, he will not let you fall during the storms of life. He, he, will not let you, he, he will not leave you. He will not abandon you. He will protect you. He will provide for you, even in the storms of life. Now, this world has so many things going on. And he said, he said, in this world, you will have tribulation. So it's not a big surprise to anybody that we're having tribulation, that we're having all kinds of things. If he said, I've overcome the world. He is the rock solid foundation for our lives. And there's nothing better you can do for your children than to put them on the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you would bring them to Christ. And not only bring them to Christ, but teach them to obey His Word. When they have choices in life, Jesus or the world, Jesus or their friends, Jesus or whatever else is going on, choose Jesus. The foundation for their lives. We're wise, wise if we build our lives upon the foundation, upon the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he spoke to the foolish. Again, it's easy to determine who they are. He said in verse 26, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. Now, who in the world would build their house upon a foundation of sand? Any of you have been to the beach, you know what happens. It's, it's uh, incredible. Some of these uh, sand sculptures that people do, you walk along the beach and you'll come... Uh, to a place where some of them, I mean, it's so elaborate. They'll build castles. They'll build uh, animals. They'll build all of these things out of sand. I mean, they look, they look incredible, these, these sculptures. <clears throat> but as soon as the high tide comes in, they're gone in five minutes. They're, it doesn't matter. They have packed them, packed them, packed them, packed them. Uh, the sun has beat down upon them and made them hardened. And they're there for hours while people walk by and admire them and all that. 
But when the tide comes in, in minutes, they're gone. That's what happens to sand when the waves come. That also happens to people whose lives are built on this sand. That when the storms come, when the winds beat against you, your house falls. Your foundation gives away. And Jesus says, you're foolish to build your life upon a foundation of sand. Those who hear his word but do not listen, they do not obey, are foolish. I'm sure this house was well built, as we mentioned a while ago. I'm sure the materials were great, but the foundation was sand and it washed away and the house fell it could not withstand the storms of life it could not withstand the assaults of life this shifting sand it represents your works our opinions the doctrines of men Worldliness. Those who have, who want their ears tickled. They don't want to hear the gospel. They don't want to hear the word of God. They want to do their own thing. This is very serious when Jesus teaches like this. He is a man of great compassion. Great compassion. He's a man that cares so much about people. I mean, he died in our place for our sins. But he's also a man of truth. And so he said, there are some of you, you're religious. But your foundation is sand. And one day, it's going to wash away, and you're going to fall. Your life is going to come apart. The house of your life will be destroyed. And so, as he does so often, Jesus confronts us with choices. Being wise are being foolish. The Bible says in James that we should be doers of the word and not hearers only. Be doers of the word. Not just listen to it. Not just come in and, I mean, who wouldn't come in here today and see the beauty of our church, of our gym? <laughs> who wouldn't come in here and see this and hear those songs the guy sung. Who wouldn't come in here and then feel better after that? Who wouldn't? Right? I felt great just sitting over there listening to these songs. Christmas songs. Heaven songs. And then just looking around how beautiful it is. I mean, we're all going to feel good. But some are going to go do what Jesus said. They're going to go in obedience and some aren't. And Jesus said, the wise person will do what I say. He will obey my words. He will hear them, listen to them, and they'll be important to him and, and he'll go do them. But there are some people who are listening and they thought his teaching was great. And that he had authority. But they got up from there. And they went home. And they never obeyed him. They never followed him. And they had religion. But they had nothing real. Their life was on sand, not on rock. The only evidence that Jesus presented was obedience. If you love me, 
if you're a man, obey me. He made it pretty simple. He made it pretty simple. He made it to where you can examine your own life and say, well, I believe in Jesus. I've trusted Jesus. But have I obeyed him? Are there things that I'm not really following him? I'm just doing my own thing out there. I I don't want to be inconvenienced. I don't want to be committed. I don't want to give up my time and my things. Jesus said the wise are those who will do what I say. They will obey my words. And so I'm thankful for his straightforward picture His straightforward teaching. And I pray all of us are those who will hear His words and will obey Him. Obey Him in His character when He said things like love one another. Not just like, not just tolerate, not just worship together, but who will truly love one another and when he sent us out as salt and light and when he said go into all the world and preach the gospel whatever he said we should do that's the only evidence of our salvation Are we doing what he says? Today, are you wise? Are you foolish? Have you built your life on a rock that will not be shaken? It will not let your house fall. When the storms come, it will stand. Or have you built your life on sand? Shifting, sinking, Washing away sand and your life will suddenly fall. There's so many people who think they have it made in their work or in their home, in their lives. They're young and have all these things going or maybe they're older and they've accomplished what they wanted to. Now they have it made and yet the time is coming when all that washes away. And their lives fall apart. Be wise. First of all, if you don't know Christ as Savior, you need Jesus. He is the only way to be saved. Not by religion or not by a church or not by your works, but only through faith in Jesus. No other name under heaven whereby you must be saved. There, there's the spirit of antichrist in our world, but Jesus is the only way you can be saved. If you don't know him, you need to know him today. You need to come repenting of your sins or turning from them and trusting Jesus as Savior. If you are saved, examine your life. Is it a life of obedience? The rock The foundation of your life is your obedience to the Lord Jesus. He said, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. Those who hear and do. Those who hear and obey. Examine your life. The foundation, this rock, is your obedience to the Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus and for his words. He taught us so much in these chapters. I pray we would be obedient. Lord, if there's someone here in this service 
or who are watching or listening through the program, I pray, I pray that they would be saved. If they're not saved, I pray today they would be saved. This very moment they would come to Christ. And Lord, I pray for all of us who are saved that we would listen carefully to the words of Jesus and be obedient. Let his words be more important than the words of anyone else. Help us to love him, to obey him, to serve him. I pray, Father, we would do what you want us to do and help us right now to make the right decision, wise or foolish. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming out and uh, being with us today. And, uh, if you're visiting, come back and be with us. We'd love to have you anytime. And uh, we'd like to say something about our New Year's Eve service. You know, we always have a big blast on New Year's to end of the year. We got some concerts. Have uh, typically three groups coming in, and and uh, this year be a little different. We still plan on having it. And uh, But we're going to have it here in the gym, all right? So things will be a little different. We'll be putting some things up. But one thing I would like, Rick, maybe go back there on the list that I uh, just lay them all out that way. Do the, Rick, here, here's an ink pen. Maybe if you got an ink pen or whatever, but uh, make sure it writes. But if you would put your name down and how many tickets you'd like, and if you want to sit in the front and the, or the mid or the back. And uh, if you got friends that come, that's fine. Then, uh, But main thing is how many tickets you want together, all right? You may have some friends that, that typically come. Or